Audio Jungle. Um, so the first question that I want to ask you, Anisha, is, um, well, first, just tell everybody. You know. Yes, I am. Um, first, okay. <laughs> just tell everyone um, who you are and um, what you do um, for those who don't know. Okay. Hi, guy in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Anisha Collins. Um, I am a photographer slash videographer slash nerf slash believer, slash all in. Now you can choose the order you want to put them in, but I know the, the priority. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's basically what I do. Awesome, awesome. Um, and the next thing I want to ask you is, um, what's the deeper purpose behind you, behind what you do? Um, is there like a backstory? How, how were you led to start being a photographer? I started with a company called Kingdom Promotions um, a little bit after I first moved to Florida from New York. Um, voluntary basis, uh, served in different areas, and then just one day I was like, I'm going to bring a camera, and kind of just found, like, my niche. I was like, I love capturing those moments that you can't repeat. Um, sometimes not even in video, it's not the same. Um, and then I was just led, honestly, by God in the middle of the night, like 3, um, probably 3 a.m., and he was like, just do it, and I was like, just do what? Like, I was so lost, I didn't, you know, I didn't understand. And then he was like, everything will be provided for you. And from that day, like, everything was. I mean, like, my first camera that I bought, like, the price was great. Everything, you know, was great. Um, and then from there, I just, you know, continued to stay focused on that. And then I eventually left Kingdom Promotions and branched out um, to do my own thing. It was hard, very hard leaving yeah. Kingdom Promotions. Very, very hard. I mean, it's... But I'm back with them now. Okay, cool. And it's really difficult, um, it's really difficult doing anything, I think, on your own, like, you know, starting off and, you know, trying to maneuver, and yeah. that, that actually goes into the next question I was going to ask you. Um, what, what, have you experienced any setbacks, and how do you, how do you deal with those discouraging moments? Is there any advice you can give anybody? I think the first yeah. Um, the first year, the first year, um, for any, I think the first year for anybody is hard. Um, whether you, you know your business is something like what I'm doing, or you know even being a minister. Um, okay or they, you know, they answer like and whatever, like your first year at anything that you're trying to be that committed to full time is hard because you really don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to come your way that, that you like, well, how do I handle this? And, you know, I always tell people like a lot of the, the handle it is really tough because I really stepped out on my own. Um, and I had a couple of people laugh at me like, what is she doing? And, you know, um, I mean, it, it varied from you know, a lot of different things, and then just kind of saying God, like, at the end of the day, and I know this is not what, because, you know, God in the Bible promotes community and fellowship, but yeah. I kind of went into an isolation period yeah, while yeah. I was, um, and during my first year, and it allowed, but for me, see, a lot of people, when they go into isolation, they still isolate themselves from God, whereas uh, for me, like, I was isolated, but it made me get closer to Him, it made me think more, so it was a different type of isolation for me. Um, I needed to also cleanse from some things in my past and things that I had done, um, so it just gave me time to kind of like regenerate, refocus, you know, stuff like that. All right. You're going to be on my Instagram again. You know? Okay, cool. <laughs> mm? All right. The next question that I was going to ask you is, um, you know, how does it feel being chosen to do this? Like, how does it feel knowing that God has specifically Ooh. created you to um, do what you do? I mean, you're a nurse, you have healing hands. Um, and you are a photographer. How does it feel to be specifically created for that? That's a tough one. <laughs> um, that's no real talk. It's, it's tough. Um, I think. Okay, I'll just give you the straightforward. Like, um, 
initially I wanted to become a nurse because I always felt abused and used. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have a, I have a natural caring and giving heart, and a lot of times people will um, abuse someone that um, is like that, and they don't care because it doesn't convict them. Yeah. Um. That that's that's a part of their nature. So for me, when I first became a nurse, it was like, oh, I can give back to people who really need that loving, caring, giving person. Yes. Um. Being exposed to the medical field and how it really is, you learn that you may be that light in the darkness. And I'm not even I'm not even jumping spiritually yet. Like just in general, because patients when they're in that bed and they're hurting or sick or whatever, they they are so um, humble and they're so weak. It's almost like, you know, they, they say the weaker you are, the stronger, supposed to be, the stronger that you're able to recognize that you need God. Um, so it's almost the same thing. Like, you have that ability to be that light. So I think nursing has allowed me to be that light without really knowing it. Um, yeah. I'm always sharing scriptures. I think I just said it on this. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always sharing scriptures. Um, I have scriptures on my desk. Um, and I always find I really opportunity to hear people, and a lot of times people just hear or see people. I actually really listen, and I'm very observant. And I think having those two qualities as a nurse and as a, a photographer and a videographer and as a Christian, it kind of helps because um, going more to the end of your question, like a lot of times, like with my my status is very straightforward and blunt. And a lot of people can't handle that. And yeah. I've been prejudged. I've been told I'm rude. I've been told I'm subliminal, which I'll say, in the um, where, like, knowing I'm blatantly talking about somebody. Um, and I've had to go to before God and be like, so can you can you really break this down for me? Like, am I being a heathen? And, like, this is not, you know, this is not a you show me. But I think we live in a time now where the sugar-coated candy, uh, whether you're delivering scripture or scripture but reflecting on real-life situations, you, people don't need that sugar-coating anymore. They need that raw, like, listen, I know you're dealing with this, and this is the way it goes, and this is how you take scripture and combine reality. And yeah. that's, my, that's my mindset, and that's the only reason why I'm able to post as bold as I can because I know where my foundation is. And for me, that's how I, that's how I function as a Christian. I take re- reality and scripture and I make them, you know, fit. I make them fit together. I think it's really hard to just take scripture and not see, well, how do I fit this into reality? And it's hard to not just live in reality and be like, well, scripture is going to apply somehow, but I don't really know. You know, you have to really balance the two so that it works. Yeah. And not, and, and, but not with compromise. I mean, like, don't twist scripture, you know, to make it work. Like, it will work. Because it's, it's, it's truth and, and it, it stands on its own, but you have to do your part in saying, how do I take God's word and apply it to, you know, what's really going on with me? Yeah. So. And um, speaking of that, I wanted to, um, you know, also just ask you, or I, I wanted to say real quick, I totally agree. Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of times Christians have that misconception that being a light and salt, they think of being a light as, you know, being a light and salt as being fun and and, right. and, 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 and and you know appeasing and all that kind of stuff but being a light and salt you know means mm-hmm. being set apart I mean and sometimes that means defending others around around you but sometimes through offense that's how people get their healing and their um yeah but I think it's this task though to with that I agree with what you're saying but there's definitely task because yeah absolutely. you know the bible is offensive in itself um so there's no need for you to really add much to it. You should be yeah. able to deliver it exactly how it is without adding your own refers, what I call. Um, the next question that I'm actually going to ask you refers to um, weaknesses. And um, I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you, um, you know, how does it, how does it, how do you handle the trials that come when it comes to like your health, for example? How do you deal with that? How do you, oh. <laughs> how does that, because I, I mean, it can, it can either shake your faith or it can build your yeah. faith. You know what I mean? I think I, I'm a real believer now that um, any everything really does happen for a reason. You yeah. never see it in the moment. You always see it after. Um, but go, starting from, like I said, when I left Kingdom Promotions and I kind of went on this isolation period, which brought me closer to God. I lost some friends and community, and I'll be honest, the opportunity to – fellowship with the quote-unquote famous people, yeah. um, as people say, um, but it, it, it strengthened my foundation with God. So while people might have think, thought like, oh, she's doing something in sidebar, or I've had a couple people say that I was better than everybody, and I left, wow. I, you know, 
Yeah. I'm like, that's fine, whatever. But I know what's really going on here. Um, it brought me closer to my family, my me, my blood family. Um, and then so I think cultivating those things when you um, go through things, health issues or anything of that nature, um, you kind of have something to really um, stand firm on. It needs to happen. But the benefit of B happening is better for me than A. I'm going to go with B because at the end of the day, it's like I'll have this, but I'm still going to be battling here when this is a solution. So let's just do this and, and, you know, be content. And I feel that, you know, like once again, everything happens for a reason. And there's so much things that we focus on um, that really have no value. Like even with being married, right? Yeah. (laughs) I agree. Like a lot of people – I want to be married. I want to be married. First of all, the Bible says that not every every person will marry. So that's number one. Number two, even when you get married, your spouse is not supposed to take the place of God. So if you get married and now you shift from, you know, all your attention was on God to the person that I'm with, you're still doing it out of order. He may have blessed your marriage. He may have sent that person for you, but it's still out of order. Therefore, there's going to be something that happens to bring it back into order. Um, you know what I mean? Mm. Say what, what that may be, you know, depends on, you know, what God thinks say. He can decide what he wants to. But, so, you know, like, there's so many, I think once you start pushing out the way, like, what what is really what really matters, sorry, <laughs> that's when um you're able to kind of really sit and say, you know, I need to be focused on this. Uh, another thing is, I've met people who are worse than me. With being a nurse, um, I've been exposed to people that um way less than I do, have way more health ailments than I do, excuse me. Um, and someone I met um, within this year, uh, Jazz Shea, you know, she needs a heart transplant. That's nothing compared to what I'm through. And I see her push hard. She has her days too, you know, because your body does what it wants to do when it wants to. Um, but to see her smile, I mean, that girl has, she should be like Colgate, try it, uh, try it at whatever teeth whitening commercial because yeah. her smile is, is ridiculous. Uh, you know, just getting yeah, who really, you know, um, even the other girl, I think her name is Laura Mill, she needs a heart uh, transplant as well. I don't really associate much, but I know of her story. Um, just meeting people like that and seeing how they persevere through their suffering. And one of my, um, my like my sec- second favorite scripture is James 1 and 2, um, which one of my friends, uh, Melissa, gave me as a reference. Because there was a season where I was just like one after the other, I was just getting hit, hit, hit. And I was like, I don't understand and she said, all I could think of is, you know, perseverance and suffering, what, how much we grow. And so, like, I, you know, I keep that as another scripture that, you know, my snack, you know, my snack is, like, when I need it, I take a bite of it and remember. So I think that's really what it is. It's not me because, honestly, without me growing in Christ and, and having, you know, um, taking the time to study and get intimate with him, I would be way, way off where I am now. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, what's wrong with her? She ain't saying <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, no, no, go ahead. I was, I was going to ask you this short because I, I use this too as another foundation, and I just told a young lady this uh, the other night. Um, I think um, for me, what I remember, what you said, you were saying about, you know, being fearful and all that, God qualifies our call. You know what I'm saying? Like, He's already qualified you. So, Man, now man is completely different. They may look at you and be like, "Oh, you know, you don't have what it takes. You've only shot one music video. You only, you only did one concert tour." So, but if God, you know, God, God qualified you, and if it's meant for you to do whatever it is, uh, He's gonna have to be. He's the, he's the yes or the nay. Like it's not man. As much as man makes you believe that, and I said another scripture I stand on is Colossians three twenty three. You don't ever work for man. Um, and I stand firm in that because man will have you feeling like you're so inadequate, you can't do it, you, you know, they will find everything wrong with you, and it could be absolutely nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Um, so I think just knowing that he qualifies the call, and if you're qualified for what it is he's making you do, um, or I should say he's called you to do, then that, that's it. There's no there's no need to walk in fear because God doesn't give you, you know, a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. and, you know, he doesn't give you a spirit of confusion either, or that's not really a spirit Anyway, he's not a guy with yeah. all your confusion. Yeah. So those two things can only point to someone who is deterring you, which is the devil. And the devil doesn't know nothing. He only knows what we tell him, and he only knows what he assumes, which is uh, usually wrong. That's so, good. Go ahead. That's good. No, I, that's really good, actually. Thank you. 
And the next question I wanted to ask you is, how is it, you know, shooting the caliber of artists? Because these are, um, I don't necessarily um, refer to them necessarily just as artists, um, because they have such a bigger responsibility than just an artist. Um, um, how does it feel photographing people who are such game changers and such leaders um, in in the kingdom of God? You know, how do you, how do you um, how do you take all of that in? Because mm -hmm. these are men and women of God that are very uh, okay. right. Yeah. Um, some men may not like this answer, but it's okay. I'm I, this is an issue. Like, okay. Um. Um. It's a 50-50 experience, meaning it's 50, the 50 percent that's like this is awesome, so much love, and then there's that 50 percent where you get mistreated and um, overlooked, and there's some superstar ishism that's a word going on. Yeah. Um. So I think what I do, what I've done, um, and what I still do is I really try to stay focused on what I'm to do. And um, I try not to focus too much on the negativity, though I'm human, so I have my moments. Right, right. Um, but I think what's helped me is I've established um, different types of relationships with some of these people. Uh, for instance, like Shana Lee, her and I talk almost regularly. Um, and she's, she's known, you know, more so in New York, but she's known, you know, throughout as well. Um, Andy Mino is another one who um, has been open to just, like, he's been very encouraging. He just actually told me recently, like, he was just, you know, saying, like, wow, how much I've grown and how much, you know, my work has gotten better. And I think that, you know, some people say, what you mean getting better? Like, coming from somebody <laughs> like him who, yeah. like you said, is out there, it's like, it means a lot because it's like, I'm not saying what his word is golden. What I'm saying is right. it's showing that, you know, he sees how you've grown. He sees how you've grown in your your craft so just to hear him say that you know um and, and i've shot a couple of things that he's been in it, it really meant a lot um v rose is another one she's she's extremely encouraging um real dope chill down to earth so like um oh jason i have to if you're gonna put this on i have to put out jason he's dope um, yeah e -Mob. Yeah, there's and, and these are and it's funny because some of the ones I'm naming are not really known like that, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. if you say, but their heart is so pure and their heart is so humble that it makes you want to eat. It makes you want to work with them yeah. because it's like this is how it's supposed to be. Um, Fizzle's another one. Yes. Uh, so I would say like that kind of uh, those kind of experiences I've had, you know, what you said, like Superstar Famous, if you want to call them that. Yeah. Um, those have been very cultivating and, and, and good. Um, I'm not going to say that other people that I've shot things of haven't been. Um, I will just is say, is it really I'm for God or is it about you and the brand and the money? Um, I think, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, because it may mean that I just don't need to be involved with that particular organization or that particular ministry or that particular artist or singer or whatever, because I don't just do artist stuff. I've done, you know, different um, things for different types of craft. Um, so, uh, oh, have to shout out Martha Munizzi. I just did a promo video for her Viva La Woman conference. And, oh, wow, that's um, exciting. They just hit me up. Yeah, and they just hit me up about doing some more work with them. So those experiences have really said, like, you know, it, it's all God. And I think which, whoever you're supposed to be linked to, if it's, you know, got to keep it that way. Yeah. And, you know, but like I said, the, 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 if you want to call it, like you said, the bad side of it is just really assessing, like, um, I think when you're connected spiritually to God and you have the Holy Spirit and, you, you know, you, you're able to discern his voice, yeah. you really do pick up on this is not for God. This is for your pocket. Yeah. Um, or this is not for God, or y'all need a more foundation in, you know, in, in ministry and, and what God has called us to do before you start, you know, um, doing this kind of stuff. So I would say, but even if, with that, if you want to see it as a negative, I have definitely taken the time to see, well, what is it teaching me? Yeah. So that's where I see the positive side of it. Um, that's really my response to that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's I think that's a perfect response because if you're not strong enough, I think it's really I think um, any time you go into ministry for God, you have to be well equipped spiritually to um, endure and to avoid those type of temptations. Um, 
So I'm really glad that you shared that because there's a lot of people out there who just got saved yesterday who are thinking about <laughs> coming out with a rap CD. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they want to yeah. be, you know, America's next top celebrity for Jesus Christ, but they don't really realize that <laughs> the successful ones are the ones who are really dying to their flesh, who are really servants of God, right. and they see themselves as servants. They don't see themselves necessarily the way everyone else may see them. Um, right, and that, that's, that's, that's real because I'm, I'm sure, you know, and I had nothing against him, but I'm sure a lot of people look at Lecrae, you know, like he's famous, but you don't really know the demons that he has to battle right. in the position that he's in. You know, the, the more you're in the spotlight, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll do something visually, like if I move this lamp from me, I don't know if I could do it. I, I'm going to get darker, right? But right. if I put this lamp closer, I get lighter, right? right. So it's like the 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 um the more spotlight you have on you, the more people are going to look at you. And you have two things. If you are doing it for yourself, we all know the famous scripture, you know, pride comes before the fall. Oh, yeah. Um, But I think it just places you where you're going to face a lot of scrutiny. You're going to face a lot of things because – you're now in the forefront where it's like, if there's, if there's 500 photographers standing next to me, I'm not going to be as significant as the one photographer standing up front with 500 people behind me. Right. So I think when you when you get, you know, in, in positions, it's, it's all fun. To, I'm not going to lie. It, it's fun yeah. being at these yeah. events and, yeah. you know, and, and seeing them. But there's a responsibility yes. that comes with it. I think that, you know, that a lot of people don't realize that these artists, videographers, depending, and even with those people, you don't really know um, when it comes to videographers and people that are not like an artist on the mic kind of type stuff. You don't really know their face base if you don't know them. They could be dropping in like it's hard and, you know, shooting with crazy music video or some, you know, somebody's yeah. music video, but their foundation is not of God. Yeah. Now, I don't know where that is a is an issue for the artist using them. Yeah. I don't know because the Bible says, you know, to um, use every opportunity, you know, so it's like maybe people who are known like that, you know, they might work with a secular artists because they feel like this is an opportunity for me to share the gospel with them, you know, it all depends on how you look at it, um, but, yeah. yeah. I totally agree, um, and let, um, I just wanted to let everybody know, um, or I wanted you to let everybody know, how can people get in touch with you, um, what kind of booking do you do, and, and where can we get in touch with you for booking? Are we recording? We are recording. Okay. <laughs> that, I, I, I'm totally down. So I don't know what you mean by, like, what type of booking do I do? You mean, like, different types of stuff I shoot? Yes. Um, as um, far as um, okay. what, what do you shoot? Because I know certain photographers oh, only okay. photograph do <laughs> yeah. certain types of photography. So. Right. Okay. I pretty much do everything. Um, I've done weddings, um, personal photo shoots, private photo shoots, family, maternity, um, concerts. I do um, video as well. And, um, second shot, a couple of music videos. Um, I'm going to be doing some primary shooting, meaning un solely under Unashamed Imaging soon. Um, I've done promo videos. So I kind of do a little bit of everything. My thing is I, I will never tell nobody no. Um, I'll tell them either, look, I'm not experiencing this, but I'm willing to try it. You know, you see how you like it. We'll cut something that works for, you know, both sides. Um, and if not, I always say, hey, look, I don't do this, but I know five other people that do, and I'll shoot, you know, get, shoot a reference. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much what I do as far as what I shoot. Um, I could be reached via email at unashamedimaging at gmail.com. Right now my primary, like, um, visual viewing is Facebook okay. and YouTube more so for videos. I am actually in the process of getting my logo redesigned by Jared Wells, does great graphics. Nice. Okay. Design, look him up. <laughs> and um, I'm doing the website as well. So, because I'm at that point now where I'm blessed, honestly. I have to say this, I have to plug this in. I'm really blessed for the amount of work that I've done because I'm almost like Uncle Reese. Uh, like, he doesn't have the big, you know, uh, following, but that, you know, but he put his heart into that song, which was just him to Jesus. And now it's going like, it's, it's like a virus. Um, so for me, it's like a lot of my gigs come from word of mouth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, randomly it's the person who goes, oh, I just spotted your stuff. But a lot of my referrals are word of mouth. So I think everybody that has, you know, shared and referred me to, you know, to someone. That's pretty much it as far as contact. 
Thank you, thank you. Um, Anisha, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad You're you welcome. took the time out. I thank you for your real, real responses to these questions, and I thank you for um, sharing, um, sharing everything um, with us. Um, it's really been a blessing. Um, I look forward to seeing what you're going to be doing in the future. And I, I just want to talk to you and tell you personally, for a word of encouragement, you have been so inspiring, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, so inspiring through social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's been a blessing to me personally, um, and I'm, I'm grateful mm -hmm. for that because what a lot of people, you know, I work in marketing as well, and you know, one of the things my boss says is they can they can see you smile through the phone, and it's true. And mm. when even when you write your statuses and um, Instagrams, your heart is so genuine towards it, and I really I can tell it's something that you've either been through or you've experienced, you know, observing, and it's yeah. like it's like wow, I'm it's like I'm so glad she just said that. <laughs> I'm in her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I really, I really, really appreciate that, um, and I just want to thank you. Thank you so much.